I recently asked my gran why she doesn't use online banking. And this was her response. No way would I commit myself to this. <laughs> I just wondered why. Because I'm terrified of it. That I might do something really silly and I put too many noughts on the end of something. Um, no. And no, I really would not be happy. And, and all this talk about um, security it just stares me even more. There were two words that stand out to me there. Scared and terrified. The digital world evokes fear and trepidation amongst our senior citizens. It is intrusive, it is unknown, and it is unsafe. This is why I chose this topic. It's because of the emotion that underpins it. I use my online banking app all the time. I love its convenience. And yet, my gran is terrified by it. And all of you in this room right now will have your own perceptions of understanding of how your friends and family have used dig digital world in their senior lives. And that brings me to the single pr premise behind my presentation. Our senior citizens have been left behind by the digital revolution. A big part of the new digital divide in our society. Now, the digital divide doesn't just relate to senior citizens. It includes those people in poverty and those people with disability, perhaps, as well. Those people that don't use technology. But I'll be focusing on our senior citizens today. I could not live my life without the internet. Now, I made that statement in my pitch for this competition. I thought, what an idiot. Yeah. First world problems or what? But it's true, to an extent. I could not organise my finances without the internet. I use the internet to organise my travel. I use a ticket on my phone. I use it to get my degree. I'm pretty sure I use it a fair amount of my employment as well. And yet, 2.8 million of our over 75 population have never used the internet before today. Never. That's enough people to fill Wembley Stadium 31 times. Same size population as Jamaica. But what you might all be thinking right now is, well, who cares? So what? Why is this important? I don't know that because I'm a telepath. I know that because I recently wrote a comment on LinkedIn saying, might we also take steps to make the internet more welcoming for our senior citizens? I feel they've been left behind by this digital revolution. And I got a response from someone called Laura Lee. <coughs> Is something that's been happening since the late 80s really a revolution any longer? How dare she question our digital revolution? I was hoping to base the rest of my career after the digital revolution. <laughs> but she went on to say this. The seniors of today were middle-aged then and seemed to be doing just fine. Just fine. That's probably a view shared by a lot of people. They're doing just fine. Well, nearly one in five of our over 80 population say that they feel lonely often. That goes up to just over two in five that say they feel lonely sometimes. Now is a lack of digital engagement the cause of this? Probably not. Is it part of the solution? Absolutely, yes. Let's also consider the growing political divide. The majority of the over 65 population voted for Brexit, far outstripping the vote of the millennials across the pond. This is how the millennial generation voted at the recent US election. And this is how the over 65 population voted. Donald Trump, by the way, is 71 years old. This is how he recently described cybercrime at the first US pres presidential election debate. So we have to get very, very tough on cyber and cyber warfare uh, it, is a, it is a huge problem. I have a son. He's 10 years old. He has computers. He is so good with these computers. It's unbelievable. The security aspect of cyber is very, very tough. And maybe it's, it's hardly doable. Thank you for that insight. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
But my, my hypo hypothesis here is this. <coughs> the digital divide, the fact that our millennials are in a different online community to our senior citizens, is both a symptom of and a contributor to the growing political divide in our society. I think that's really important. I think it's impacting the world. It's impacting all of us. Let's get back to Laura. Now, Laura's still asking me, so what? Well, why is this important to me? It's a shame, but why is it important? Well, Laura, this issue isn't going to go away. You will be old one day. You will be out of touch with whatever future generations coin is being digital. In the human life cycle, we are growing into technology in our early years, and then we're growing out of it in our later years. That's why this is important to you, it's why it's important to me, and it's why it's important to the whole of our society. Now let's consider the solution. First, from a technology perspective. I recently asked my grand how many of her friends use technology, and of those that do, how do they use it? And this was her response. Not a lot, really. A lot of them are now going on to iPads, having given up trying to understand their computers. Trying to understand their computers. That alludes to a really important point. Convenience is critical in trying to engage our senior citizens in this digital world. It has to fit seamlessly into their lives. It cannot be abrasive in any way. The technology has to work around the individual, as opposed to the individual <coughs> working around the technology. A like level of user experience hasn't been achieved in our current technology. It still requires effort. It still requires an understanding of the logic behind using the technology. That's even true of iPads. The next tranche of technological innovation is really exciting, however. Talking technology. Apple Siri or Amazon's Alexa. I'm now talking to my technology. It's a verbal interface, which is the most natural interface you can imagine. I tested the theory this morning. I asked my Siri, is it going to rain today? And it said, yes, it is. And after which it says, 12 o'clock. Senior citizens will now be able to ask their technology to play that song they used to love when they were in their younger years, or to start a FaceTime conversation with their granddaughter. It's going to remove that barrier of complexity. Next, the Internet of Things, a fridge that orders its own food. A thermostat that turns on just before I get home. A kettle that starts to boil just before I wake up in the morning. This is going to be really valuable, particularly for those people who are infirm. And finally, cognitive computing. My technology is now going to be able to learn about me. It's going to be able to adapt to me. It's going to be able to predict what I want in the future. Built into this concept of the technology working around me, as opposed to the other way around. We bring all this technology together. It builds the technological landscape that we need to be the catalyst for breaking the senior digital divide. Now, you maybe I'll all be sitting there thinking, well, this is really great, Christopher, but where's your extraordinary digital story that I've been told about? Well, for that, let me introduce you to someone called Peter Oakley, otherwise known as Geriatric 1927. He first posted his first YouTube video at the age of 79. And here's an extract. Absolutely brilliant. The world came to love Peter Oakley. At one stage, he was the most subscribed to YouTuber in the world. He went on to produce 435 videos. The internet came to know him as the granddad of the internet. 
He was recently asked how the internet had enriched his life, and this was his response. I could not live without the internet now. I catch up with television programs I might have missed. I listen to the radio on it. Uh, one great thing is that in, you can uh, communicate with people all over the world. There are programs where uh, you can interact with people both on camera and uh, with speech, most modern computers have built-in cameras and uh, and microphones, and I talk with people from China to Sweden to Germany, England, America, um, practically every day, and um, certainly it has enriched my life as a, as a widower living alone. I know elderly people who who didn't want to know, and. Um, now you can't get grandma off the internet, so I hope um, I hope we can encourage more people uh, to uh, to do it and embrace this new technology. However, my time is up, so um, goodbye. I couldn't put it any better myself. My submission to you today is this. Our senior citizens have been left behind by this de digital revolution. This matters to me, it should matter to you, it should matter to society as a whole. But there is a more proactive way forward, so that more senior citizens, like Peter, can say that they could not live their lives without the internet. Thank you.